marching in the colors.
Lord be with you. My way, kneel and sing solemnly the entrance. Stand. Blessed are you, O God, our Father. All nations worship you. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ. You bring new life to the world. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit of God. You brought us together in love. Blessed be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear a prayer for your faithful people that in our vocation and ministry, we may be instruments of your love and give your servants now to be ordained the needful grace, gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Call it for purity together. Almighty God, 
to who all has sorrowful, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, let the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Here, the words of comfort and Savior Christ says to all who will return to him, come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. God so loved the word that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here, what St. Paul says, this saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, fairly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly kneeling upon our knees. Together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word, with, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry. And repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who 
die for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the next of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The collects and the readings. O oh God, from the family of your servant David, rest of Joseph to be the guardian of your Ekanet son and the spouse of his virgin mother. Give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Almighty Father, through your Holy Spirit, you have appointed many ministries in the church. Bless your servants, Owen, Noho, Obaze, and Ikech, who now call to be bishops. Maintain them in your truth, renew them in your holiness, and make them your ever faithful servants through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gavcon College. Eternal God and gracious Father, whose Son Jesus Christ died for our redemption, commissioned his disciples to preach the good news and send the indwelling Holy Spirit in every generation to embrace and proclaim salvation in Christ alone. Arise and defend your church, the pillar and bulwark of the faith. Shine the light of your holy word upon hearts darkened by error and strengthen the work of Gavcon so that the, almighty, the Anglican communion throughout the world proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations the captives may be set free, the straying rescued, and the confused restored. Bind your children together in truth, love, unity, and courage, that we, with all your sins, may inherit your eternal kingdom through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, you hear nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning from verse 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the 
by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of God.
epistle is written in the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. This is the word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Matthew chapter 28 beginning at the 18th verse. Jesus came and speak to them, saying, All authority have been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This is the gospel of Christ. Speak to us, O oh God, in the language we will hear you and address our hearts to hear you clearly that we might obey you and not sin against you. Lord, not my word, but your word. Please hear us and speak to us. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I want to start by really expressing my profound gratitude and appreciation for the honor done on me and my wife to be the retreatant of these four bishops elect and their wives. Your Grace, I want to thank you very much for considering me unworthy as I am to stand today and to bring the word. I have had the privilege of interacting with this ordinance who are to be consecrated today, and on the list of my friends, I have added four plus four, eight new friends. I thank you so much and pray to God Almighty to uphold you, you and Mama Nigeria, to bless your primacy and to bless the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion and to continue to give you strength in the name of Jesus Christ. I must say a very big thank you to the Archbishop of Lagos, my brother and friend, the Most Reverend Michael Fakwe and wife, but our host, Archbishop, uh, our host Bishop, did very, very well, and his wife, the Right Reverend Peter Rotimi Oludipe, and Professor Bimbola. We thank you very, very much for making our stay in Ijebu Diocese very, very comfortable. And I want to say a very big thank you to the venue of the retreat, Samson Afolabi Anglican Church, the vicar and the wife who hosted us. I must say, Your Grace the Primate, 
This is the neatest church I have seen in the Anglican Communion. A very wonderful small congregation glorifying God. I also note that a servant of God gave his own house service all the, the air conditioners and indeed the bishop elects have good light and they had very comfortable beds to sleep and very good food we thank you very 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 much god bless you the people of Ijebu Diocese, the, you have honored God and you have honored our primate by accepting us. God bless you. I am taking my text from Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 10 and that verse says as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man the face of a lion and the right side on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Brothers and sisters, according to chronology, I think it happened in the fifth year of King Jehoiakim captivity, which marched the fifth year of Zedekiah's reign as the final king of the people of Israel. The scene in chapter 1 was before the disaster. For in the eleventh year of the king Zedekiah, Jerusalem was taken and destroyed far, far earlier. The king of the ten tribes was captured as a result of a Babylonian assault on Judah. Ezekiel was reportedly brought to Babylon during Jehoiakim's captivity. Thus, before Judah's 70-year captivity, the prophet was in exile in Babylon with the captives and began in 606 BC. In fact, that the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel is fascinating. Put another way, God especially chose and honored the prophet to receive the ancient vision. Daniel and Jeremiah were both alive at that time, yet the vision was delivered to Ezekiel. Daniel was only a few kilometers away from Ezekiel when the vision in chapter 1 happened because he was in the capital. Regarding the significance of the cherubim, the cherubim vision, and the four faces of those angelic beings, a great deal has been written, and a great deal more will presumably be written. I don't have enough time today to investigate the riddles surrounding these passages. 
and the related passages in the Gospels and the book of Re Revelation, which also make reference to four-phase cherubim. Nevertheless, I plan to offer a quick analysis of them. Scholars of Bible have long noted the connection between the four Gospels and the four distinct roles of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ played. Works like the book of one Kells, an elaborately drawn book that contains the four Gospels published in about the year 800 AD are examples of how this is reflected. The artwork on the cover page of the Book of Kells shows that the monks of that time recognized a correspondence between the faces of the cherubim as seen by Ezekiel and John and the four Gospels. These creatures represent four aspects of Christ Jesus. One, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. Four faces. Lion, ox, man, eagle. In, our, in all four of these aspects, Jesus Christ is supreme and Lord as the lion. The Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Gospel of Matthew described Christ Jesus in this aspect as the ox. Christ is represented as the servant of God and the servant of men. While in Mark Gospel, Mark described Christ in this aspect as the man. The Lord Jesus is a lover, according to Mark, a friend, a companion, an associate, and a leader. Himself, he is deity, eternal sin, and all-powerful. His deity is fully described also in the Gospel of John. These four aspects of the Savior are revealed again in Ezekiel chapter 10. And in Revelation chapter 4, verse 6, and the following verses. In Revelation, it says, indeed, chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, before the throne, there was a sea of glass, the, like crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and around the throne, were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had the face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, 
was and is and is to come. Brothers and sisters, here they represent the judgment of God. Their position indicates that God's judgment upon Israel was averted because of the blood sprinkled mercy seed. So they then are a representation of God. They reveal how we should see God and especially how we should see him as Savior and as we do in the gospel. But the cherubim, as revealed by Ezekiel, again in chapter 1, 5 to 10, are living creatures, each one having different faces, the faces of lion and ox, a man and an eagle. Here, Ezekiel shows us that our God and our Savior is lion and ox, our man and our eagle. These are four faces, four ways in which we see God, four pictures of God and Christ, our Savior. I want us to look closely at each of these very quickly, these faces, for there is much to see in every one of them. First, the lion. The lion always has been recognized as strong, fierce, and majestic. King of the jungle, it was the most royal animal. If you read Proverbs 30, verse 30, it reads, A lion which is mighty among beasts, and does not turn away from any. What does this show? It shows that it is fearless and yet feared by all. The lion cares how many cattle face it, face it or challenge it. And even the mighty horn will die a wilder business, a beast. The lion does not cower or hide or run away. It is any wonder that Jesus is described as the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation chapter 5, verse, verse 5. He faced the night of terror and fight of Israel and the might of Rome. But there was no fear. He knew of his destiny and he knew of his victory. The strength of lion was his. My brother bishops, bishops elect, now to be consecrated you are to imbibe the spirit of lion in your ministry. Fearless, strong, and yet you are showing a kingly majesty because God has called you to lead the people of God. Lions are not necessarily terrors. I tell you this. Very, very beautiful animal, if you look at it. Very strong. 
And yet, one of the most beautiful animals is that lion. But mind you, it has a negative way of behavior. If it pounds on one, he is automatically destroyed and devoured. Brothers, as we said over and over, and indeed to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and indeed to all lay people, we are not to be tyrants to our clergy. We are not to be tyrants to the lay people. We are not even to be tyrant to ourselves. God has called us to preach fearlessly. God has called us in his majesty to be mighty. And yet, we are not to destroy the church of God. If per adventure you find yourself doing this negativity, then examine your calling again and again. Treat the clergy very, very well. Remember that as hands are laid upon you to be a bishop, so also hands were laid upon the clergy to be priests and deacons. And he that hands have been laid upon need to be honored, need to be revived, because God has poured his Holy Spirit in that person. Again, I want to call upon us all bishops to have mercy upon the people we lead. Lead them with compassion. Lead them with mercy of God. And I appeal to you as lions, Ezekiel described, and in Revelation, please pay the clergy well. Did you hear me? I said pay the clergy well. Don't hide their salaries. or They don't even collect salaries. We collect stipends. In a number of places where the bishop is eating fat, is having his salary, is having a good car to ride, and your clergy cannot send their children to school, examine your ministry. Examine where you are. A lion roars, but the roar of a lion is to make people know that he is a leader. Take leadership in your dioceses. Then an ox. I am indeed interested so much in oxes. I like cows. Even though Nigerians say when they see cows, they say the owners of Nigeria. But an ox was recognized as an animal who patiently labored to his honor. He was strong, able to bear heavy burden, and knew his or its honor. Thank God today that he gave us an example of one who patiently labored and was heavily laden with our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. The ox, among others, was animal of sacrifice in the Old Testament. So in Ezekiel's vision, the ox represents sacrifice the spiritual man touched and renewed and on fire for the Lord will recognize that his life is to, is to be a life of sacrifice. 
We are willing to lay down our lives, take up the cross and follow Jesus Christ. No more do, no more do we live our lives according to our plans. Certainly not. But his plans are for us. His plan is for our lives. We sacrifice our lives. And we as Paul, Paul reminds us in the, in the 12th chapter of Romans to become living sacrifices. Reasonable to act of worship reasonably accepted and reasonably to be service to the Lord. My dear brothers, bishops who are to be consecrated and bishops who have been bishops several years, clergy and indeed the laity, God is calling us to labor in the vineyard of the Lord. Wherever you find yourself, labor for the Lord. Not for yourself, not out of what you can gain out of the ministry, but out of what you will give to the Lord. The, the ox was a beast of burden, and it represents servanthood. We must be servants. Let me give you these short stories. I am full of stories. Here, there was a very rich woman. And this rich woman was very wealthy. And she had a servant. This servant was a houseboy. This, this servant was a child of God. He was a Christian. Each time he was paid his small allowance or salary, he tied very well. He gave for the work of God. He sacrifices. He serves the Lord, not only as a servant, but he also served in the church with all what he had. Eventually, this young houseboy died. When he died, he went to heaven. And in my story, when he went to heaven, he met Apostle Peter. Brother Peter said, welcome, my servant. Here is a limousine car for you very luxurious car. And he said again, there is a mansion for you. That is your mansion. He rejoiced and entered this mansion. Eventually, this woman who was wealthy, she was a Christian too. But she was not tidying well. She was in between church and the world. Now she died. And you know in heaven, everybody will be rewarded according to his deeds. Then when she went and met brother Peter, Peter gave her a two-bedroom flat. And he gave her a Volkswagen car. The one you used to know, the Beetle car. She complained, she complained. And she said, Brother Peter, is it true even in heaven there's discrimination? This was my houseboy, riding limousine and living in a mansion. As she was complaining, she looked through the window and she saw her pastor riding a bicycle. What does this story say? Those of us who are pastors and lay people and everyone, we are committed to serving the Lord. It's not about being having a position. 
His position does not work in heaven. God deals with our souls. He deals with servants of God. So we must be faithful to what we are doing. Wherever God has placed you as layman, be faithful and truthful to the word of God. Live a practical Christian life worthy of emulation. If you are a pastor, do the same. If you are a bishop, do the same. By so doing, we will win the race. Then we see the face of a man. The face speaks of mind, reason, affection, and all the things that encompass human beings. God took the face of a man so that a man could see the face of God. There is the danger, there is the danger that we too can easily be caught up in the divinity of God that we lose sight of his humanity. This face represents the relationship. Again, we find the perfect example in Jesus Christ. Jesus did not live a solitary life. It was part of an earthly family with, exten with extended family ties. He lived in a community with Jewish friends and neighbors. God is calling us again to friendship, evangelism, good relationship. When Jesus began his public ministry, he chose to share it in a relationship with 12 hand-picked men. Remember, he picked them accordingly, one after the other. Each one by right is or was an expert. My dear brothers and my sisters, we must live as one family, recognizing that everyone deserves to be respected. Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, it says, it says, respect one another out of reverence for Christ. In another version, it says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In another version, it says, honor one another out of reverence for Christ. All of us, co heirs of the kingdom of God, when we meet in that kingdom, we are to share in the kingdom of God. And that relationship must begin here with love. Clergy, love your bishop. Bishops, love your, your clergy. My dear brother and your wives, to be consecrated. You must bear in mind that as soon as you get to your diocese, you have gotten friends. I don't know how many in your diocese. Is it 400, 200, 30, 50? Make them friends and make them part of your family and together run the diocese and build the kingdom of God. I want to remind you of your calling. Very soon, the legal party will administer the oaths and declarations. And the summation of those oaths and declarations are one, loyalty to God. You must be loyal to God, your maker, your creator, to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Don't be carried away by what your office can give you. They are deceitful. They can deceive you. You must be loyal 
to God Almighty. If you don't get it right, you are not loyal to God. Everything you do will be in shambles. Then you have to be loyal to the authority of the church. You can see you are called from different areas. Kasina, Obia, um, Uyo, and Oji River. Different parts of the country. Primate did not know you before you were elected. Most of the bishops here don't know you before you were elected. But the church today gathered together to lay hands upon you and to pour the Holy Spirit for the office of a bishop. You must be loyal to your church, the church that ordains you, the church that called you to do this ministry. Your loyal must be total, not half and half. Total loyal. Then you must be loyal, number three, to the authority of the church. You will now take an oath to be loyal to the primate and to his successors. And even to your ordinary, those who are senior to you. Now, in doing this, don't forget in your life that we have taken many vows. We have taken marriage vows. If you have forgotten, we have taken diaconate vows. We have taken priestly vows. Now, some have taken the vows of being bishops, and you are taking the vows of being bishop to be loyal to the authority of the church. The church can call you anytime, anywhere, to do the gospel and to do the business of the building of the kingdom of God. That loyalty must be seen in you. And as you grow in the ministry, in the episcopate, never you think that you have overgrown the, lawyer, the authority of the church. Brothers and sisters, finally, Ezekiel sees the face of an eagle, a powerful, swift, and strong bird that flew above storms like below where only sorrows, dangers, distress, never becoming weary with an amazing vision and sight. This speaks to us the divinity and deity of God himself. He has supreme power. He has supreme authority. He is the master of all that he surveys. All things are under his feet, and all things are in his vision and his plan. He has the highest vantage point. No enemy, and I say no enemy, and no devil could ever or should ever rise higher than God Almighty. Praise the name of the Lord. As an eagle, as an eagle, you will observe that the Samis use this language because the eagle's life speaks much about learning process, the process of discipleship. Eagles carefully and methodically train their young ones to soar, to fly, and to hunt. That is an eagle, a very powerful bird, and it teaches its young ones to do that. They watch over them as they mature, encycling them, caring for them, and guarding them as the apple of their eyes. 
brother bishops, as we celebrate the consecration of these bishops, and indeed all of us, we must know that in all, in most circumstances, eagles are victorious, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are victorious. Are you with me? We are victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. Despite all the challenges surrounding us, despite all the things we suffer, God Almighty makes us eagles to endure, to fly, to soar. And don't, don't play with this victory. This victory is in the service of God. And I will tell you this story, which is my last, my last story. I will not say it again after this. You know, there was this woman again. She just gave birth to a newborn baby, very tender, an infant. Woman, how do you feel when you have a new baby? You are happy, despite the labor. You, you are happy. But let me tell you, the men are happier than you. And let me tell you something, especially if you give birth to a child, a male child like him, he's happy. But God gives everyone, everything, male or child. But this woman had a baby, her first child. And she was living down up there, up there, in upstairs, a story building, very tall. And behold, there was fire disaster. There was fire disaster. And she was up. How could she get down? How could she save herself and save the baby? Besides, this was her first baby. Oh, dear me. It's, it was a very, very difficult situation. But look, many people will normally run to the scene of the fire, inferno, or disaster. Some to steal, some to loot, some to watch, some to see what will happen. And they look at the woman there in the story building. What will she do? Then those who were watching decided to help and save the woman and the baby. Then they look at the woman and say, Woman, throw your baby from there. We have a footballer among us, and the footballer is a goalkeeper, and his name was Victor. Now, it doesn't refer to any Victor here. His name was Victor. You know, goalkeepers are very sharp, and if you watch the last match of Super Eagles, the, go the goalkeeper was a star. He was a star in that tournament. Then, of course, the captain was a star. There was another star that was never allowed to function in the last match. But here was a goalkeeper, a very sharp and able goalkeeper. Then he used to catch a baby from upstairs that the baby will not hurt. If you are a woman, Will you throw your baby? Will you throw your baby? But she had no option. And she took courage and looked at the public down and gradually dropped the baby. And Victor, being a good goalkeeper, flew in the air and caught the baby, and the baby was not hurt. Can you imagine? Thank you for clapping. But listen to Victor. 
When Victor caught the baby, he was very excited. You know, in football match, people say, Hey, Victor, Victor, Victor has done it. Then he was carried away by the public. He bounced the baby and kicked the baby. There are many Christians. Like Victor, we are carried away. We have many distractions around us. Bishops, we are distracted by trivial, unimportant issues. Clergy, we are distracted by trivial and unimportant issues. We do not want to be focused. We must be focused on the work God has given, given to us. Unlike Victor, he was carried away by the praises of people. Don't worry about the praises of people. Let God praise you. Are you with me? Let God praise you and let God honor you. When God honors you, no man, no man will take that honor. My dear brothers and my sisters, let us work hard for God in this our church. I mean, let us work hard. No matter where you are, whatever you are, whatever position you hold, please work hard and build the kingdom of God unto him who is able, the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God, to him be glory and honor now and forever.
we're seeing the next thing there. Sitting down. Sit down, please.
the next team. The Lord be with you. The hymn on page 19.
most reverend, reverend father, father in God, God we, we present, present this godly, godly and learned persons to be ordained, ordained and consecrated bishops, bishops in, the, in church the church of God. God. Nigeria is part of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. She professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation, led by the Holy Spirit. She has borne witness to Christian truth in her historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? Let the oaths be taken and customary declarations be made. I, Nuhu Yohana. I, Obazi, Tamunotare, Matthew. I, Ebuano, Iketupu, Joseph. Now, to be consecrated bishops, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the truth which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic Creed to which the historic formularies of the Church of Nigeria bear witness, and the public prayer and administration of the sacrament, I will use only the forms of service which are authorized or allowed by the Church. I do also declare that I consent to be bound by the regulations of the Church of Nigeria and canons which have been made or which may hereafter be made by the Church of Nigeria Synod or any otherwise have no lawful effect in the Church of Nigeria.
Aye. Owen Okafia. Aye. Nuhu Johanna. Aye. Obazi Tamunotare Matthew. Aye. Ebuano Iketupu Joseph. Do, Do swear, swear by, by Almighty God that, that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the private of the Church of, church of Nigeria, Nigeria and Anglican Communion and in success in, in all things lawful and honest. And I hereby undertake to accept and immediately submit to any sentence depriving me of any or all, all the rights right and emoluments appertaining to the office of bishop, bishop which may at any time be passed upon pass me after due examination by the, the primate acting under the constitution of the Church of, of Nigeria. I agree to exercise the said office of bishop, bishop so long as may be required of me by the primates and, and his successors acting under the Constitution. So help me God. I, Owen Okafia. I, Nuhu Johanna. I, Obaze Tamunotare Matthew. I, Ebuano Eketuku Joseph. Confess before God and his, and his church that, that I am, I am not a member of any secret court. court. I also vow that, that I will never join any secret any court. Secret court. And, and I owe allegiance to no other but, but the Lord the Jesus, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. And, and that my loyalty to him will always be absolute, total, and, and undivided. If and I go back on this oath and vow, I put myself under the, the wrath of, of God in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, Owen Okafia. I, Nuhu Johanna. I, Obazi Tamunotare Matthew. I, Ebuano Iketupu Joseph. Declare before God and His church. That, that I have never been a homosexual, bisexual, and I vow that I will never indulge in, in, in the practice of homosexuality, bisexuality, and that and if I have this discussed, I am involved, found to be, or professed to be a homosexual, bisexual, against the teaching of the Holy Scriptures, as contained in the Bible. I bring you upon myself, myself the full wrath of God and subject myself willingly to the canonical discipline as a shrine in the constitution of the Church of Nigeria and the Communion. communion. So help me God.
Check it out. Beloved in Christ, the people have chosen you and have affirmed their trust in you by acclaiming your election. A bishop in God's church is called to be one with the apostles to reclaim Christ's resurrection and interpret the gospel and testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You are called to guard the faith 
unity and the discipline of the church to celebrate and to provide the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant, to ordain priests and deacons, and to join in consecrating bishops, and to be in all things faithful pastor, and wholesome example to the entire flock of Christ. With fellow bishops, we will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of the Petrarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of a bishop? I am, I am so, so persuaded. persuaded. Do you accept this call to be a bishop, believing it to be the will of our Lord Jesus Christ? I, I do. do. Will you, as a shepherd and leader of his people, faithfully fulfill this trust and obey our Lord Jesus Christ in your ministry? By, By the help of God, God I, I will. will. Do you believe the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ as taught in the Holy Scriptures? held by the undivided church and declared in the creeds? I, I do believe. believe. Will you devote yourself to prayer, to reading the scriptures, and to such studies as may deepen your faith and increase your love for God? By, by the help of God, God I, I will. will. Will you teach and proclaim the gospel of Christ and declare its meaning to the world? By, By the help, help of God, God I, I will. will. Will you accept the discipline of the church and faithfully exercise authority within it? By, By the, the help, help of God, God I, will. I will. Will you be faithful in ordaining and commissioning those who you believe God has called? And will you constantly guide, support, and encourage them in their ministries? By, By the, the help, help of God, God I will. will. Will you strive to fashion your life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? By the help of God, I will. Will you, for Christ's sake, be gentle and merciful to all and defend those who have no helper? By the help of God, I will. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given you the will to undertake these things, give you also the strength to perform them, that he may complete in you that which he has begun through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, these servants of God are coming in to take a very heavy load which they themselves of themselves cannot bear. Let us in this moment commit them to the Almighty God in the ancient prayers of the church commonly called the litany as they lie down upon this altar unto God. Go the Father
govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it the unity which is your will. Enlighten your ministers with knowledge and understanding. Especially we pray for Henry, our primate, Michael, our archbishop, and other archbishops, Peter, our bishop, and all other bishops, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Bless your servants, Owen, Nuhu, Obase, and Ikeshuku, now to be ordained and consecrated bishops, that they may serve your church and reveal your glory in the world. Bless their homes and families that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. That they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. The divisions may cease among all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Jesus, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. That the church should be a faithful witness in our mission and that she may preach the gospel to the end of all the heart. That those who do not believe and those who have lost their faith may receive the light of the Gospel that we may have forgiveness of our sins and the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. That the world may have peace and that our spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples.
Lord. You are merciful and forgive our sins. You hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we sing the hymns on, from page 26, the bishop select will be going to put on their habits.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Him on page 28. God of mercy, God of grace. We sing it standing. People of God, we go to the Lord in prayer. In this solemn moment, as we invite the Holy Spirit of God to fill this place in His glory and power and fill the lives of God's servants as we sing and chant Veni Creator Spiritus. Give 
We praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Apostle and High Priest of our faith and shepherd of our souls. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death and that having ascended into the heavens he has given his gifts abundantly making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists some pastors and teachers to equip your people for the work of the ministry and to build up his body. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants Owen, Nuhu, Obaze, and Ikechuku, whom we ordain in your name to share the ministry entrusted to your church. Almighty Father, fill them with the grace and power which you gave to your apostles that they may lead those committed to their church in proclaiming the gospel of salvation. Through them, increase your church renew its ministries and unite its members in a holy fellowship of truth and love and enable them as true shepherds to feed and govern your flock make them wise teachers and steadfast as guardians of its faith and sacraments guide and direct them in, pre in presiding at the worship of your people. Give them humility that they may use their authority to heal and not to hurt, to build up and not to destroy. Defend them from all evil that as rulers over your household and ambassadors for Christ, they may stand before you blameless. And finally, with your servants, enter your eternal joy. Accept our prayers, most merciful Father, through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. We are in prayers. Pray for this servant of God, Owen. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf. To the flock of Christ, feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost, uphold the weak, restore health to the sick, lift the downtrodden, ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Please pray for Nuhu. Nuhu, receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the church of God now committed to your charge by the imposition of our hands in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by the anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost. Uphold the weak. Restore health to the sick. Lift the downtrodden. Ensure discipline but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please pray for Obaze. Obaze, receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the Church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost. Uphold the weak. Restore health to the sick. Lift the downtrodden. Ensure discipline. But forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for Ike Chuku. Ike Chuku received the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the Church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. In the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide. And tell them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost. Uphold the weak. Restore health to the sick. Lift the downtrodden. Ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Their wives.
The Lord be with you. Shall we all stand? Amen. Page 31. Today, we celebrate the gift of ordained ministry in God's church. Will you greet your new bishops and welcome them in Christ's name? We welcome you. The new bishops will do their first episcopal duty now. The peace, peace of, of the Lord, Lord be always with you. you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Father, please, the waters should help us. to call in with your comments, questions, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Reach out to us on any of our social media handles showing on your TV screen now. And before we dive into the trending news, I hear there's a trending news that happened yesterday. Smart. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I see a man who has chosen the pathway of joy, irrespective of the prevailing mm, situation. situation. Even if the fig tree doesn't blossom, my mind is set on rejoicing yes, in the God oh. of my salvation. When a man comes to that point, mm. you see joy like a river, river. unending, flowing, flowing into his life. God said, I am about to do the unusual. Oh, Can yes. I speak for you? Perhaps ah, you have oh, asked an I issue that you need God more than Shut ever before. You care not to know how many Shut years you. you have been in exile. exile. We declare today mm -hmm. that the Lord will remember you. Amen. You are coming out of that dungeon Amen. in the name of Amen. Jesus. In public parade and education parade, the same thing or are there any difference? And what chance does a suspect have after parading him and at the end of the day he's improving?
last verse. The last verse. The Lord be with you. Page 33. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Where the earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruits are divine and walk of human hand, it will become a spiritual drink. Together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son as Lord, for He is your living world. Through Him, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people of your own position. And now we give you thanks because within the royal priesthood of your church, you ordained ministers to proclaim the word of God to care for the people, to equip for them for the work of the ministry, and to celebrate the sacrament of the new covenant. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth of him, glory, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May we need to pray. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we follow his example and obey his command. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed to bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying 
take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made one for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his well perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love. And unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Together. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. There are people of God as we prepare ourselves to receive the body and the blood of Christ. We like to announce that we are going to have five stations and there will be two stations up at the gallery. One will be to this side and another to the 
other side, the other wing of the cathedral. Those of us at the main bowl, the two main bowl, those who are sitting at the main bowl of the cathedral will please come to the altar to receive the communion.
ablution him, take my life and let it be. Page 40. First and last stanza, please. As our Savior thought us, so we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him, the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that the new bishops may be to us effective examples in word and action in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with them, may serve you now and always, rejoicing in your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Notices. Praise the Lord. Let's do it better. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. It's a great pleasure to welcome all of you good people of God to the thousands of Ejebu on this auspicious occasion of the consecration of four new bishops added to the workforce of our national church the Church of Nigeria. And on that note, I'd like to specially congratulate our national leader, our Papa, the Most Reverend Henry Chukudum Undukuba and Mama Angela Undukuba, the Archbishop Metropolitan and Primates of all Nigeria. Papa, we welcome you to our diocese. We pray that the Lord will continue to renew your strength, bless your primacy, and increase you on every side. Mama, more strength and more grace in the name of Jesus Christ. 
would like to specially welcome all our papas, all our fathers in God, all our archbishops and bishops. I'd like to specially recognize the dean of our church, the most reverend blessing in Yida. We want to thank you, sir, for coming. We appreciate you. We also want to appreciate the preacher in this service and the retreatant. They have Papa the Dean Emeritus of our church, the most reverend doctor and Mama Ali Buba Lamido. Let's put our hands together for them. I was telling Papa that we can give him a chief tansy title. He has been with us at least for one week. Uh, so he's, he, he now knows what it means to be an Ijebu man. So he has enjoyed this environment and um, he actually blended with us. We appreciate you, sir. We thank God for the word that the Lord sent through you to us today. We pray that the Lord will continually renew your strength, bless your episcopacy, and continue to grant you robust health in the name of Jesus. All our archbishops and all our bishops and all our mamas would like to welcome you as we congratulate the newly consecrated bishops and their wives. We pray that as you go from here, the presence of the Lord will go with you. The work and the task to which God has called you, the Lord will stand by you. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not be wounded and you will not be injured in the name of Jesus. I like to especially acknowledge the presence and the support of our own dear Archbishop in Lagos province, the Most Reverend Dr. Michael Olushin of Fakwe and Mama Toyin Fakwe. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. We pray that God will continue to renew your strength and bless you with robust health in Jesus' name. I must also acknowledge all our bishops in the province of Lagos. Uh, although Ijebu is hosting, but this has been uh, something that we received the massive support of all our dioceses within Lagos province. I'd like to thank all our bishops and all their wives for their support. And I pray that God will continually rain showers of blessings upon you and upon your diocese is in the name of Jesus. I want to thank all our fathers. All of you have been wonderful. And we pray that grace will continue to abound towards you all in Jesus' name. The Chancellor of our church and the Registrar, we appreciate you. Thank you very much uh, for coming all the way from Abuja to be part of this very historic service. As um, For those of us that attended the dinner last night, the last time a consecration service of the dawn or the tenor of late Papa, the Right Reverend A.S.O. Oluwoyo. And we want to thank God that 29 years down the line, we are here again sending great men of God out to go and labor in the service of the Master. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Let me, in a special way, also uh, appreciate and acknowledge the presence of our own dear Chancellor, Otumba Shegun de Muren, uh, their Registrar, Honorable Justice Oluwakemi Oshisaya, and the Deputy Registrar, Barrister Labi Okusoya, and all other legal officers from several other dioceses across the Church of Nigeria. We welcome you very warmly and we appreciate you for being part of this service. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. I'd like to also welcome and appreciate our royal fathers. Uh, I must say that in Yebu land, we are blessed uh, in so many diverse ways. Several of our royal fathers have been very wonderful and supportive to us. Let's put our hands together for them. 
Particularly, I'd like to acknowledge the paramount ruler of Ijebu land, Alayluya, His Royal Majesty, of our Dr. S.K. Adetono. We want to thank God for his life. Uh, he couldn't come physically, but he has sent six of our royal fathers to represent him in this service. Let's put our hands together for them. I'd like to acknowledge all our fathers that are here. His Royal Highness of our A.A. Uguntayo, the Ajalorum of Ijebu Ife. Papa, we appreciate you, sir. Of our L.J. Adebajo, the Orimolusi of Ijebu Ibo, we appreciate you, sir. Of our M.A. Adeshino, the Olowu of Owu Ijebu, Royal Highness, we appreciate you, sir. Of our A.A. Adenuba, the Bumawe of Agoywoye, we appreciate you, sir. Oba Bib Awoba Jodi Limeri of Awa, we appreciate you, sir. Oba AR Okubanjo, the Obiri of Idobiri Ayekwe, we appreciate you, sir. Oba OO Oba Yomi, the Elese of Elese, we appreciate you, sir. Oba OO Ogunye, the Oju. Oduma Toro of Abigi Kingdom. Papa, we appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. Oju tomorrow. Ama. Oju tomorrow. Oju tomorrow. I think I've tried this time. Oh. Baba, I'm coming to Abigi. I will pronounce it well when I get there. Baba is an eminent Anglican. The KBC himself is an Anglican church member. We appreciate you. I must say that several of our fathers here are wonderful Anglicans. Oba A.A. Uguntayo, the Ajalor of Ijebuife, is a distinguished Anglican. Oba Olowu of Owu, Oba Adeshino, is a distinguished Anglican. We appreciate you. The Elese of Elese of Elese is a Bible study leader in the church at Elese. He leads the Bible study during Sunday services. So it's a wonder, they are wonderful Anglicans. We appreciate all of you. And of course, like I said, the KBAC of Abigi, they are all wonderful people. All our KBAC is, like I said, Ijebu is blessed. In fact, you can find in average, an average family, you find a blend, a mix of both Muslims and Christians. And you cannot find anybody fighting because of religion here. No, we are all brothers and sisters. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen and amen. Even though our KBAC, the paramount ruler of Ijebu land, is a Muslim, but he has a permanent seat in our cathedral here, where he worships. This seat is dedicated to whoever is the paramount ruler of Ijebu land. And if he has occasion to worship, you see him singing joyfully, you know, with others in the church. So we praise God and thank him for all the blessings that we have received. I'd like to also appreciate the Director of Chaplain Services, Protestant Nigerian Army, the Lieutenant Colonel Venerable T.E. Ogmon Yomi. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you. In a special way, I'd like to thank our primate because I'm Mama Nigeria. When they arrived yesterday, uh, in spite of the rigors of the, you know, of, of, of the road, of the travel, yet without taking any rest, they went straight to Ijebu North Diocese to condole and to visit the wife of our late bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. S.G. Kukbono. Papa and Mama, we appreciate you. We thank you for identifying with that family and that diocese at this very critical period and we pray that grace will continue to abound upon you and upon your primacy in the name of Jesus and divine protection will be upon all our fathers in God the bishops and archbishops of this church in the name of Jesus all our papas I pray for you you will finish well and you will finish strong in the name of Jesus I like to Thank and appreciate the wonderful support of the clergy of Ijebu Anglican Diocese. Let's put our hands together for them. The clergy and the clergy wives of this diocese. You are wonderful. 
You are fantastic. God bless you richly in the name of Jesus. We want to thank all. The choir has been very, very exceptional. God bless you. We appreciate the Guild of Stewards, the Boys and Girls Brigade, all the workers, those who have served, particularly to ensure that we are comfortable. I'd like to thank the Cathedral Standing Committee and all the wardens of the Cathedral. God bless you richly in the name of Jesus. Of course, without mixing words, I'd like to thank the chairman of the local organizing committee. Please put your hands together for our dear brother, our great uncle, Dr. Tony Okeowo. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. I must say that and his amiable members, he went all the way out to ensure that nothing goes amiss in this arrangement. In fact, I was telling somebody that it's like Uncle gave us all the lifeline available to ensure that everything will be smooth. The Lord will continue to increase you, sir. The Lord will bless you with robust health, and it shall be well with you. We'd like to thank the security people for all that you have done. All of you are wonderful, and as we go back, the presence of God will go with you in Jesus' name. The Bishop of Oji River plans to entertain his guests at the cathedral basement. So if you are his guest, please go there. Your grace, thank you. The Lord be with you. On behalf of the archbishops and bishops of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, we want to appreciate the Lord Bishop of Ijebu Diocese and Mama. We want to appreciate you with your diocesan board, the local organizing committee, your clergy and the laity, and especially the illustrious sons and daughters of Ijebu Diocese who have risen to the occasion. May the Lord remember you and bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, Baba Akiola used to say the reward for good work is more work. We will not wait for another 29, 30 years again. I think, <laughs> I, yes, you are not the one that will tell us. <laughs> Just get ready. <laughs> Amen. The Royal Fathers, we are very grateful. We have come in the name of the Lord. We have stepped upon this land and God will remember you and your sons and daughters. God will bless this land. And we speak to the four winds of this land that they will blow upon you goodness and mercy of the awesome God. And under your leadership, the land will prosper. The people will be protected. And you will enjoy the goodness of the Lord in this land in the name of Jesus. We are indeed very grateful. Immediately after the service, as we process out, we will process out in reverse order. And... Uh, we will process out with the newly uh, consecrated bishops and their wives and their chaplains. And uh, after that, the admissions and bishops will come back and we will wait briefly for some briefing uh, inside the altar. Please, we want to thank the choir. We want to thank the clergy. We want to thank our legal officers, the Chancellor and the Registrar of the Church of Nigeria, the Chancellor and other officers of the Diocese of Ijebu. God bless you all. Thank you so much. And uh, we would have said, let us make three tents and stay more. But as I said, we will come back. We will come back someday by the grace of God. Thank you so much. 
I would want us, as a mark of honor and respect, to a fallen hero, a general in the army of the Lord, the Right Reverend Dr. Solomon Kuponu, the Lord Bishop of Ijebunok Diocese, whom the Lord called home. He would have been here with us. But because of what it pleased God to do, he's not here. Let us rise up and be quiet for a minute and pray for his family and his diocese as we prepare for his burial on the 18th and 19th of April. In Jesus' name. Sovereign Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your dear servant who labored and labored in your vineyard. Unto your God, it has pleased you to take him back home. As a church of God Almighty, today we ask that will please you, that you grant him always a place in your bosom. We leave to God the family that are left behind and the diocese of Ijebuna. We pray that to God you will grant unto them a special comfort of the Holy Spirit. We pray that Lord Almighty, even to God, the larger church, the larger body, the Church of Nigeria, we are, O oh God, your departed servant, has made great impact. Comfort, O oh God, the leadership of our church in Nigeria and the entire church of the Anglican Communion. Father, we we'll commit further into your hands the burial preparation. We ask, O oh God, that it shall be peaceful. You will provide all that is required. You will remember the diocese, it will not in a special way. And your light will continue to shine. Take all the glory and all the honor. Because we have a great expectation that in the resurrection morning, when we all, oh God, both those who are dead in Christ and those who are alive, we shall all meet together. Grant that we shall be part of you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The doxology, doxology. Let us pray. 
We give you hearty thanks, Heavenly Father, for your presence with us, your help and guidance in this ceremony and celebration of the consecration of these, your servants, as bishops in the Church of God. We pray, Lord, you who have known them and who have called them, you will stand by them, you will equip and empower them to do your will and carry out the tasks which you have committed into their church. Lord, through them build your church, encourage the saints, and Lord, by their hands do valiant things and glorify your holy name. We thank you for your word that has come to us this day. Grant, O oh Lord, that the words which we have heard with our outward ears will by your grace be grafted in our hearts. And by your Holy Spirit may we bring forth fruit that will honor and glorify you. And finally, in your mercy, Lord, you, the God of peace, beat down Satan under our feet. And as your children travel now, even those that are on their way, let your protection be over your children. And let your glory cover this nation because of what you have purposed to do for the honor of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good Render to no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. To serve the Lord. Amen. Boys Brigade, march out the colors.
the Lord be with you. We want to bring to our notice that we have changed the date for this year's Joshua Generation International Youth Conference, which will hold at Moshida Biola's stadium in Abuja. From 1st to 5th, it is being changed to 8th to 12th of April. 8th to 12th of April 2024. Please continue to pray that the hand of God will continually be upon our young people and bless his church and raise the next generation to continue with the work of the kingdom. God bless you. Our recessional hymn, Hymn for Processing Out, is on page 41. Who is on the law side?
we shall be received to your kingdom through Jesus the Lord. Amen. terms of true worship, we must seek the Lord. We will not be able to come with all our perfections. We will recognize as superseding every other gift. So love, in essence, is very important. Our position is who we are. Our disposition is the way we relate to who we are. So 